Hey guys, Terry here. Hey, I recently got a card in the mail. This was from Jeannie. Um, I appreciate it. She wrote a little note to me and it was nice that she put it on a postcard so that I could use the card. I've done that for people before, so that's a cute idea. So she, um, I ordered some close to my heart product from her and she sent me that. So I thought that card was so pretty. So very pretty and I love that thinking of you font. That is really neat. So, thank you, Jeannie. And uh, it is time for sheet load of cards. And for December, Alicia has put together a really unique pattern here on the front of the card. I can't wait to see how this goes together. So, um, as always, she gives you the supplies that you need. And then um, on the second of the month, she'll show uh, how she made her cards. But I'm going to just follow along on the instructions here. Um, I think what's nice about this process is if you just follow along, it's just, uh, it doesn't take a lot of work because it's not something you have to do a lot of thinking about. So she tells you how to cut the paper, how to cut the cardstock, and then how to assemble it. So um, just follow along. You don't need to, you know, put a lot of thought into it. Um, I just went and grabbed, um, it calls for two um, sheets of 12 by 12 and I'll tell you what, when I was going through my paper I thought, no, I don't want to use that, I'm going to use that for scrapbooking, I don't want to use that one, and then I thought, no, pull out something that you like and make the cards with it. So, um, I don't know why we treat our paper like it's some something we're going to save for a special day. The cards you're making are special and you're going to send it out to friends and they're going to love getting the cards. So um, so I pulled out this paper. I thought it was nice and um, nice and springy and I think the stamp set that I'm going to use, because that's what I do, is I kind of flip through my paper and think about what what theme that I want to do. I've got a bunch of Christmas cards so I don't think I need Christmas cards. But um, And then the next thing I did was I went through my stamps. And um, this is from Pink and Maine, called Grateful Greetings, and I'll see if I can find it on Amazon. But I love this You're the Best, um, and the thank you is cute too, but I think the You're the Best is kind of something that I can use um, year-round, so I thought that was good. Now another thing that you can do is, if you print the instructions 100% um, so that it's full size, then you can lay your stamp set on here and see if that stamp is going to fit on the sentiment strip. So I noticed that this Y is just a little bit bigger than the sentiment that she has on there. So what I'll do is I'll make that strip a little bit taller than what she calls for in the instructions. So it's nice that you can um, kind of lay your stamps on there and see what will fit. If you print this, just print it normal. I've always had the PDF print 100% and it, um, you know, does it to size. And then I think the other thing that we're going to do is, once we get our paper cut, she's included this third page this time, which I love, and we can lay our card on here and line up this diagonal piece that's on there. So how unique is that? So let me start by, I've pulled my paper, I've pulled my stamp, and um, I'm going to now follow her cutting instructions and I'll come right back and we'll assemble a couple of them. Okay, I have my pieces cut. Um, I think I forgot to mention that the paper is from Cartabella and like I said, if I can find a link to that, I will on my uh, product page. There'll be a link down below to my blog post that'll have a link to everything. And I decided with this beautiful uh, flower paper to use like a red cardstock for the trim pieces. And then um, on her sample she used a white uh, sentiment strip, but I'm going to uh, use this blue. And I think it goes with the uh, paper pretty well too. So I'm going to stamp on there. Um, when I stamp I like to use my Misty. And this is really nice when you're making um, a batch of cards like this. And I don't think I mentioned, this month it makes eight cards. So I like to put this in my Misty, my stamp positioner, and then get my stamp out here. And I will put that on there. I made it a little bit taller and a little bit wider than what was 
on the example, and that's okay. You can make the card your own. She just gives you a jumping, jumping off point. And it's the first time I use this stamp set, so it is um, going to be, a, you know, super sticky. So we'll just use that to get the, just using the oils on my finger to kind of prep that stamp for the first time. And then what I like too about the Misty is if I don't get all the um, spots with that stamp set, I can restamp it. So I make sure this paper is down in the corner of the Misty. And then put this on here. Let me get the magnet out of the way. There we go. That looks really good. So that's going to be fun. And I think it'll uh, go with the colors <clears throat> on that paper real well, too. Okay, the Misty makes really quick work of that. So, got those ready. Okay, and then if you've watched my videos before, you know that I like to use a stamp chamois to wipe the stamps off. Um, this will um, really clean the stamps off well. And I had someone ask me a really good question. She said, does this stay wet? And I keep it in this plastic case. So it'll stay wet for like uh, this evening as I'm working on my stamps. So um, I get it wet when I start to craft and I have it in here and it'll stay probably wet all day. Um, but I do open this up and let it dry. Um, I don't think anything would happen to it. Um, but I do like having it in this plastic case. And if you're using a wooden stamp, you can also just open this up and, and clean off that wooden stamp on it. So the plastic case comes in handy. So let's start assembling the cards. And like I said, I can't stress enough to watch uh, Crafty Owl's um, videos. On the first of the month, she shows uh, what her card pattern is like. And then on the second of the month, she shows um, how she assembled them. And there's always some tips and pointers that she that she gives us. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to her third page, where she lines up that last this one here, where she shows us how to line up that diagonal. And I also have my card bases made out of my 110 pound card stock. Uh, you don't have to use something that thick. Um, it's just something I, the way I started making cards was with this, this um, thick card stock. So I've kind of gotten used to it. Um, it's a little bit hard to fold in the middle, so I do use a um, score pal to score it. And then um, they're folded nice. So I recommend that. But our cards are going to look like this. We're going to have the um, colored card stock and then our printed first printed paper. And then we're going to have our diagonal and the coordinating card stock. So that's going to go on there. And the idea is that this is going to go diagonally across the card. So she shows us where to cut on here. So I'm going to follow those instructions to cut it in half. And then we put it on the corners of the card, as you can see on here. So she has made it so that you can lay your card on here and use this as the pattern. And then lay your um, cut piece and line it up there. So you'll have one in the top corner and one in the bottom corner. And then in the end, it'll look like, like this. And then she gives a little idea here of adding some type of embellishment. And then, of course, I've got my uh, sentiment strip that's going to go across the bottom there. So I love the colors of these papers. I love the flowers and I love the yellow. 
and then I think these all coordinate. So let me get a couple of them glued together and show you what they look like. Okay, I've got my pieces assembled, and I'm not going to tell you exactly where to cut on this diagonal piece because I want you to go watch Alicia's and download the uh, PDF for yourself. But I'm going to cut this in half per her instructions on the PDF. And then um, I originally thought that you put this on the card base, but we don't do that yet. We put the diagonal piece on first. And with the guide of her um, instruction sheet here, you can put your pattern paper on here. And then you're going to take the short piece and put it up here on the top and just lay it where it's got that pattern on there. And then you're going to do the same thing with the tall piece. And notice I'm not gluing in the corners there because the corners are going to be cut off. I'm just laying that on there. And then we have, oh, and you know what? I realize that I did this wrong. So it does have the, um, it's turned this direction. So let me put some more glue on there. And let me take this one off, so got a little bit of time with my liquid glue here before it completely dries. This is why it's a good idea to watch her video on the second day before you start gluing anything. So let's try this again. We're going to put it on this direction now. Now I see the pattern. It looks more finished with this trim piece here. Alright, so this is going to go on the card down to the corner. That looks better. Much better. like those trim pieces there. Okay, now we can simply turn this over, cut off the corners, made those a sticky mess. You can avoid the sticky mess by not putting glue all the way down on those corners. Okay. And then this will be the piece that you glue onto your card base. So, we put the glue on and we'll see what this looks like. And I'm just leaving a little border a little white border around the pattern paper. Okay, and then we'll put the sentiment strip here at the bottom. And that's what that looks like. And because we use two pieces of cardstock, you'll have one with one background and one with the other background. And this sentiment's really big. I'm thinking I might change the sentiment. I'm not sure. Okay, I found a little stamp set. I think it was from uh, maybe a paper pumpkin Stampin up, from Stampin' Up. Um, but it's got these nice little small sayings on here. And I decided to use the thinking of you. So like I said, I used the back of the pieces that I had already, um, you know, cut. And I stamped on those, and then I used the um, Gina K uh, label die. This was from the Gina K Master Set 1, and um, I decided to cut them with that. And then this is what they're looking like. So I like that they're nice and small. They kind of don't hinder the um, diagonal uh, 
pattern paper that's going across the page there. So I like this, and I like the thinking of you. So that's what I'll use. So, so I hope this inspires you to make a card, a set of cards. Like I said, this set makes eight this month. Find some pretty pattern paper in your stash. Get out two uh, pieces of it. Uh, cut it per her instructions, and the cards go together quickly. So. Um, I thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm trying to get to, to um, 4,000 by Christmas time. And um, I think that's it. I think that's everything I wanted to show you. So I hope you have fun making cards, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.